An entitled Karen tried to hit my brother, so I slapped her in return. This was a few years ago, and I was really young. I can understand that back then, I was an irrational boy. Back then, I was 11 years old and was with my mother and my younger brother, who I am very overprotective of. You see, that day, my mother and my brother and I went out on a day out in that well-known town in France. It was July and was pretty hot for a mountainous area. I could see everyone was pretty frustrated. After a long day of walking around, my mother left me and my brother in our car while she went to the shopping market to get some groceries. It was right next to the place where we parked, and she had done that many times before. This was France, and it was generally normal. So we were alone. It was quite busy, so we had one of the most convenient parking spots. We were just minding our business when a pregnant woman, about 40, with her daughter, who looked rather young, pulled up right next to us, blocking the one-way road. Keep in mind, this road was rather busy. She rolled down her window and started knocking on the back window. I, who had control over the car, rolled down mine. Immediately, she started giving us a pep talk like we were her children in French. She visibly saw we were confused as I only spoke a little French at the time. Unfortunately, she knew English and started barking at us. Why are you parked there in a spot next to the supermarket? Can't you see I'm pregnant and clearly need that spot as my child and I want to show shop. Remember, the spot we parked in was not for priority citizens, and we paid a pretty expensive fee to have it for the duration of our time there, and also that I was 11 and my brother was a fragile nine-year-old who got pretty scared already. I responded, I'm sorry, but my mom is away shopping in the supermarket, and I can't do that. She looked me dead in the eye. Okay, give me your mom's keys, and I'll park you down the road where there are plenty of spaces. I was shocked, and my brother returned a shallow suggestion, saying, then why don't you park down there? Her face turned bright red. She started yelling at him and how he should respond with respect. The line behind her had cars building up, and some of them started beeping loudly. She was literally blocking traffic. Then she got out of her car and reached to hit my brother in our car, and to reach for the keys in the car. I yelled, get away from my brother and slapped her hand hard with all of my might. She started screaming, What is your problem, you disgusting child? And got to her phone to call the cops. I saw she had a small red spot on her arm. Unfortunately for her, my mom heard the commotion and ran out with her groceries. Her daughter was now crying and there was a list of impatient drivers behind her. My mom and the security came out, guns a-blazing, not literally. The look on the woman's face was priceless. She drove away cursing us in French over and over again. My mom kissed the now shaken brother and was angry at me for slapping a lady. I explained the situation to my mom and although she was upset, she was still happy I protected my brother. Wow, this is a crazy story that absolutely had a lot of zigs when I thought it was going to zag. The fact that someone came up to this car and tried to reach in to move the car while there are children inside is absolutely baffling. You don't mess with other people's kids and from the sounds of it, they had paid for this parking spot so that their mom could go shopping. So there really isn't a big deal. Like, I understand that this lady is pregnant, but by no means does that give you obligation to act insane. Crazy stuff. And I'm super happy for the kid in this story. They did the right thing by defending their brother and keeping this terrible person away from them. If I was in his shoes, I would have done the exact same thing. A group of entitled parents make a huge scene at a restaurant, demanding that a young couple stop kissing in a booth close by. I work at an American-style restaurant. Food like burgers, chicken wings, chicken tenders, etc. While we do have a small bar, it's more of a family-style type restaurant than a pub style of a restaurant. I've worked at this restaurant for about six years and have had my fair share of entitled customers. This weekend, I had one of the worst families come in. They were celebrating a birthday and the party size was 18 with both children and adults. The grandmother and grandfather were also there, as well as the parents of the kids. The kids in question were all either cousins or siblings and the birthday kid had a few friends with them as well. This wasn't a catering event and we had large parties like this all of the time. They were in the middle of one of the rooms, which is a loosely described word, and there were booths on multiple sides of them. In one of the booths near the window, there was this couple. They were teenagers, both 14 years old. I just finished student teaching and I knew the kids. They had separate periods, but both kids seemed like good kids overall. The boy is a football player. He's very smart and gets good grades. I'm personally going into history education, and the teacher I was student teaching for is very much into the model of giving kids freedom on what they do, so most 
most units end up in a project where they could do a slideshow, an essay, a video, research paper, etc. All about a topic in an era. For example, the Dust Bowl in the 30s, or the stock market crash in the 30s as well. She also loved more creative projects, like ones talking about how protest music was used in various eras. This boy always did his projects about sports and how they were affected by politics. He knows everything about the history of sports, especially American football. It's insane. The girl is a sweet girl. She's always at his games. She's very friendly and while never showing intense interest in any topic, she's a smart kid overall and has a lot of potential. The boy was in his outfit. He had just finished practice. Him and his girlfriend weren't bothering anyone and were talking to each other privately. I ended up going over to talk to them for a little bit just because they wanted to talk to me and I think the boy liked talking to me because I was a young male figure he could relate to. The family that was there was very rude to begin with and the little kids were acting up a bit but they weren't being too bad. However, the parents of one of the kids saw the boy and the girl kissing in their booth and they had an issue with it. The mother of the kids asked me to tell the kids to stop kissing and when I told her I wouldn't do that, she got increasingly upset at me. I told them that there was no rules against kissing your loved one in a restaurant. The mother proceeds to insist it's inappropriate for her kids and nieces and nephews to see this since there were toddlers there and how the kids in the booth should keep to themselves. When I again told her there was nothing I could do, she went over to the kids and tried to get them to stop. I was also getting dirty looks from all the other adults at the party as well. This woman storms up to them and tells them to stop kissing because there are kids around. They politely ask her to go away and she refuses. She then notices the boy had painted nails and went on about how disgusting it was. And at this point, the boy looked like he was going to punch her in the face. So we had multiple staff members come over to try to de-escalate the situation. We told her we would get the owner and the other parents in the party started complaining about how we were being ridiculous and how they should sue the restaurant for indecent exposure. The owner comes over and tries to get her to calm down, but she is still going on with her think of the children rant. She had to be brought into a separate part of the restaurant to be talked to. We waited until the kids were done eating to bring her back. After they left, we banned the parents from the restaurant for the foreseeable future. Finally, a story like this has a good ending. These parents got exactly what they deserved. There's nothing wrong with a couple kissing in a restaurant. From the sounds of it, it wasn't like they were doing anything gross or anything inappropriate. It seemed like an innocent kiss between two teenagers who loved each other. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, does this lady not kiss her husband or her spouse in any way in front of their kids? Like, it's okay to show affection, in my opinion, as long as it's not getting weird. And these kids were definitely not getting weird. My boyfriend repeatedly accuses me of cheating, even though I never did. I had been suspecting for a couple of months that my boyfriend, who's now my ex, of three years was cheating on me after he had been acting secretive with me. After lots of denial, he finally admitted to me that he had been sleeping with multiple women behind my back and had even been going on dates with them for the past couple of months. Of course, I was extremely devastated and we spoke about it. He said he'd been struggling with PTSD since he was incarcerated and said he felt alone in our relationship. I decided I would stay friends with him because I love him and that maybe with time we could try to work through it. Just when I thought things could get better, Out of nowhere, he starts to habitually accuse me of having had my own affair with another man, which is not true. At first, he would bring it up on occasion in like a joking manner, but soon it became full-blown accusations. Mind you, he has no proof of this. He just keeps saying that he knows what I did, whatever that means. We have gone from trying to repair our relationship to him refusing to try to recommit to me and fix things because I won't admit that I cheated. At this point, I am in a lot of pain and just want what is best for me. I love him him a lot and desperately want to fix things, but I can't convince him that I was faithful no matter what I did. I've let him look through my phone. I've shared my location when I'm away from him. Nothing convinces him. I've told him that I can't be in his life if we can't work our relationship out. So if he can't trust me, we need to go no contact. At first, he agreed and even told me it was my choice to throw everything away, insinuating that he only cheated after I did, which is obviously a lie. Now for the past week, I've been trying to go no contact, but he is often trying to call and reach out to me. When I answer, he asks to go out to a movie with me or dinner and tells me how much he loves me and misses me, often reminiscing over our relationship and moments we've had together. It's hard because I miss him so bad and want to be with him, but I know he's seeing another woman. I just don't understand why he's doing this to me. If he really wanted to fix things, why would he make up this lie and try to gaslight me into believing it? Sometimes I feel like he doesn't even want me and that he's just doing this to emotionally torture 
after me. What should I do? Sounds like she needs to let this guy go. He is clearly emotionally immature and is trying to push the guilt of him cheating on her onto her. She was faithful. She didn't do anything, but he definitely did. This is classic blame shifting. At this point, her best bet is just to block the guy and not contact him anymore. He clearly does not have her best interest in mind, and she can do a lot better. An entitled neighbor throws a party and then demands that her guests are able to use our bathroom in our own apartment. This just happened last night. Our neighbor had been quiet for a while, and my significant other and I thought maybe she had finally realized she couldn't control the whole building. One of her cars was parked in her spot, and the other was parked on the street behind my significant other's car. So we thought all was good. That is until yesterday. We are the bottom unit of an apartment, and we have a side door that opens out onto the shared lawn that everybody shares. I think the only time I use that door is to air out the place, or as a shortcut to hang out washing that I need drying out. So anyways, yesterday we were going out and about our day when we saw our entitled neighbor and a few other people setting up chairs and tables in the yard. No big deal since it's a shared space. A few minutes later, there's a knock at the door, and lo and behold, it's her. Her. My significant other opened the door and did the usual greetings to anybody who would knock on our door. She told us she has a party and that we need to move our wooden planters off our patio because she needed our space for the barbecue. And that was absolutely not going to happen. Firstly, the patio is our space, not shared space. And secondly, they sit right next to the glass door. So I don't want some random person looking into my living room all night while they are cooking. My significant other reminded her that she doesn't own the building and that we wouldn't be moving our stuff just for her. After we said that, one of her friends went up to her and asked her what she was doing, stating that they already set up a barbecue in the yard. She huffed and puffed and walked off without saying anything to us, and we thought that was it. It was not. A few hours go by, and we ended up closing the curtains for privacy. And to be honest, whoever designed this building really didn't have privacy in mind when they installed giant glass windows that can look into your apartment. We can hear talking, laughing, and cooking, the usual sounds of a backyard party, when there's another knock at the door. I was cooking dinner, so my significant other answered it again. This time, it was one of her friends saying she had to use the bathroom, and that the entitled neighbor mentioned earlier told her to just knock on our door instead of walking upstairs. My significant other politely told her sorry, but she couldn't use ours, and she apologized for knocking and intruding. Not even two minutes later, there's a banging on the door, and by now, my significant other is incredibly angry. He opened the door and the entitled neighbor started laying into him about how dare he expect her guests to go all the way up the stairs and that he needed to apologize to her and keep the door open for her guests. Mind you, this is our own private apartment. Now, my significant other is usually a calm guy, very easy to talk to and rational, but in that moment, he absolutely lost it. He told her to get lost and to stop bothering us, saying that she can't lay claim to everything she sees. Our bathroom wasn't hers to use. Her guests could use her bathroom, and if she knocked on our door again, that he would call the police for harassment. At this point, one of her friends came over and told the entitled neighbor she needed to leave us alone and to stop bugging us before apologizing and telling us to have a good night. We expected the party to be loud and to go on all night after that, but it actually wrapped up pretty early, about 1 o'clock in the morning. This morning when I got up, everything had been cleaned up from the yard, but our planters, you know, the ones she wanted us to move, had been knocked over, conveniently enough. But the joke's on them because we hadn't planted anything in them anyways. And all that was in them was cat litter. So have fun with that. It's amazing to me that the entitled neighbor has any friends at all. Like, who acts like that? It's crazy that she really thought that this couple would just allow random strangers into their home to use their bathroom and that they would just be okay with that. I mean, that's absolutely insane. Overall, I'm super happy that this couple stood their ground and told that entitled neighbor to get lost. My girl girlfriend of about three years constantly and consistently brings up things that I have done that have hurt her in the past, and I am not sure what to do. For context, my girlfriend and I were first together about four years ago for a year, then separated for over another year, and have now been together for over a year again. So one on, one off, now one on again. When we separated, she 
moved away and then back near me for a few months. The main things that I have done that have hurt her are as follows. This first one happened about three years ago. My girlfriend believes my friend who is a female consistently disrespected boundaries by treating me like I was her boyfriend, by doing things such as talking too much without involving her in the conversations, hugging me, or treating me differently than other people, and basically believing that this friend was treating me like I was her boyfriend. This female friend was my roommate's girlfriend, and I lived with them for years, so we had a close platonic relationship that never went beyond that. This occurred when we were first together for a year, and I have since moved out of that house. She will still randomly mention things like, you let such and such disrespect your boundaries and didn't do anything about it, or... It would have been really nice if such and such respected our boundaries the first time we were together. So I don't really talk to those friends anymore because I don't want it to bring up any bad feelings. This next issue happened about seven months ago. My girlfriend and I planned to go to a music festival with a bunch of good friends that we don't get to see very much anymore. At this time, she did not live near me. She was halfway across the country, in fact. The above-mentioned couple is part of this group of about seven of my closest friends. Several months prior to the festival date, I bought concert tickets and plane tickets, booked the rental house, and organized the trip. About a month prior to the trip, my girlfriend found an attractive job position near me and decided to move back into my area. Unfortunately, her timeline to move was the same weekend as the festival, and so she decided not to go. I told her I still wanted to go to the concert, but that I would fly to her to drive with her so she could do it another weekend. Unfortunately, she insisted that she had to do it that weekend as they expected her to start the following week. I asked her if they could push back her start date, but she did not entertain the idea. This was seven months ago, and she still randomly says things like, you shouldn't have let me drive here alone, or I'm not sure I can rely on you because I needed you to drive here with me, but you prioritize the concert over me. In hindsight, I do wish I didn't go to the concert and went with her instead, which I have told her. The main reason I went were because we had this plan for many months. I had a lot of money invested into going. I don't get to see these friends anymore, and I haven't had a vacation in a very long time. These are just a few of the things that she constantly brings up. Does anyone have any ideas on how we would be able to resolve this stuff? Is it normal to take jabs for things that happened a while ago. It just feels like these things can come up and cause issues at any moment, and it does not feel good. Also, I've apologized for these things, and we have spent a good amount of time discussing them, but we seem at odds about them when we discuss them, and it turns into an argument. I think we should go to couples counseling, and we probably should have a while ago, but it seems like it might be expensive. What do I do? Okay, to answer this guy's question, first off, no, it is not normal to take jabs at things that have happened a while ago. If you've apologized, and you've apologized again, and then you've apologized again, and they're still bringing it up, then the fault is honestly on the other person, guy or girl, continuously digging in the knife just for the sake of trying to prove a point or win an argument or whatever it may be is really toxic behavior and is a massive red flag. In this particular situation, it seems like the woman in this relationship is not mature enough to forgive someone for mistakes they've made in the past. And it's kind of weird that they're not more understanding about some of these. So overall, I wish this guy the best of luck in trying to save his relationship to some degree. My girlfriend snores so badly that I have to sleep in another room just to get some sleep. The title says it all. My girlfriend and I have been together for six months, but close friends for about three years. We sleep together regularly, but she has a very terrible snoring problem to the point where I can't sleep or it wakes me up at night. I am a rather light sleeper with a sleep apnea machine. I've brought up her snoring many times, telling her it's really bad, and it's to the point where it's affecting my sleep altogether. I temporarily fix the solution by sleeping on the couch or on a spare bed and setting an alarm before she wakes up to try and sneak into bed so it's like I've slept beside her. But she's caught on and thinks I just don't like sleeping beside her altogether. As someone who has sleep apnea, and knows the wonder of having a CPAP machine. I've recommended trying a sleep study to her since the snoring is inconsistent and irregular, which is similar to sleep apnea, but she doesn't believe it because she is well-rested and doesn't feel like it's necessary. Is there a better way to talk about this and resolve this with her? I do enjoy sleeping beside her and in my own bed, but it seems like this is a minor thing in her mind. It sounds like some good communication will go a long way. Snoring can happen to anybody, and if you're a light sleeper, it's probably going to take away from your ability to sleep. 
Hopefully they can work this out and find some kind of common solution because nobody likes waking up feeling groggy and completely exhausted in the morning. This next one came from the Am I the Jerk podcast subreddit. Check out the links in the description if you want to submit your own stories. Am I the Jerk for yelling at a Karen after she almost ran me over in a sonic drive-in? So this story takes place a year and a half after the pandemic started. At the time, I was around 13 years old and I was going to spend a few days at church camp having a good time with old friends. The drive was around 10 hours and we all had to cram into a small van and a minivan. We stopped after a while and got out at a sonic drive-in to go get some food. We all waited in line to use the ordering machine they had at the benches because most of us went to use the ones in the car stalls. It was me and two of my friends ordering and we all put our orders in and sat on the curb to wait. We sat and waited and got our food a little bit later and we're having a good time. One of my friends went to order more food since he was still hungry and I went with him since our third friend went to use the restroom at a next door A&W. Me and him chatted while waiting on his food when out of nowhere a white Nissan pulls more than halfway into the stall almost hitting me and my friend in the process. The lady rolled down her window as me and my friend were standing up on the curb. The conversation went something like this. The Karen said move you stupid little kids I reserve this stall. I then said ma'am I'm sorry but my friend is waiting on his order here. I proceeded to point at the screen. The Karen wasn't having it and she said I don't care just move I reserve this spot on the app and I'm in a hurry I tried to explain to her that my friend was waiting on his order but she interrupted me and said shut up and move you stupid little brats just move. I was starting to get upset, but my friend tried to explain to her that he had an order still pending, but she called him a brat and lost it. I have a habit of getting really upset when people hurt my friends in any way because I consider them to be family. At this point, we had made a scene and I ended up screaming at her face, move it. I don't care if you reserve this spot. You almost hit me and my friend. You have no right to tell us to move. I ended up getting the attention of everyone in the stalls, the employees, and my church group, and I didn't feel embarrassed at all. I let her have it and put her in her place. And to be honest, it felt really good. She ended up going to another stall farther down after flipping me and my friend the bird, but I just sat back down with a smirk. Afterwards, the youth pastor talked to me one-on-one and asked what happened. I told him the situation that had just unfolded, and he was really understanding. He did get into me about saying cuss words, but besides that, he let me go without punishment or anything. Some other people in our group asked me what happened, and I told them the story, and my friend even pitched in. Looking back on it, it was pretty funny, but I feel like I could have been more patient and got my pastor to help me out. Was I the jerk? No, you were not the jerk. This lady almost ran you over. Honestly, you reacted much better than I would have. You don't treat kids like that? Like, obviously, there's an easy explanation for this, but the Karen just wasn't having it. So, no, you were not the jerk. You didn't do anything wrong. This lady was upping the ante and treating children like garbage. She honestly got what was coming to her. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe with notifications on. Check out the playlist at the top of the description for the next story. And if you're a streamer, use the copyright free music link down below on your streams. See you next time.